Hello friends and welcome to a new session with edupediaworld.com, your favorite portal for online education. This session we're going to start with a new topic and that is measures of dispersion. This is the second most important topic in descriptive statistics after measures of central tendency. And we had seen that a central tendency value summarize the, the distribution of a variable into a single figure which can be regarded as its representative. For example, the average marks of a student could be the representative and it is a single figure which summarizes the marks obtained by the students in various subjects. But the question is, is this measure alone sufficient? Well, it's actually not so because there may be a situation where two or more variables may have the same central tendency value although they may have a totally different pattern. Well, to understand this, let's take an example. Let's say there are two students, let me call them as A and B and say their marks in five different subjects are as follows. Say let's A scored say 20, 30, 40, 50 and 10 in five different subjects. And say B scored 28, 29, 30, 31 and 32. Now if we go on to find the average that is the central tendency value or the mean arithmetic mean of these of the marks of these two students we find that here it since the uh, the value starts from 10 goes up to 50 with an interval of 10 the average would be 30 okay similarly here again if we calculate we would find that the average is 30. Now if we represent the marks of both these students with these figures alone it would appear that they have scored the same marks but it is not so. We see that the marks of students B are very close to each other ranging from the lowest being 28 and the highest being 32 whereas for students A the case is different. It starts from 10 being the lowest and 50 being the highest. Now this shows that this student scores very well in a subject of his liking whereas in some other subjects he has scored very badly. Whereas this student seems to be consistent in almost all the subjects. In other words we could say that this student is more reliable. Well what we need to understand as of now is that the central tendency value, the arithmetic mean or any central tendency value alone is not sufficient in itself to tell about the pattern or about the other fact, the, uh, dis, uh, descriptions of a distribution. Therefore, we need other quantities. and these other quantities there are many we have measures of dispersion we have skewness we have kurtosis to name a few and as of now we will just take up the measures of dispersion also called as the measures of variation now let's understand what is the meaning of dispersion dispersion in itself means the distribution or the scatteredness or the variability. So it tells us about the scatteredness of the data. In other words, we can say that it measures the extent to which an individual, individual item vary. It's the measure of spread of the data about its central value. Or it can also be said as the measure of the scatteredness of the data.
Now why do we need a measure of dispersion? The first point, the first objective is to compare the extent of variability in two or more distributions. That is, to compare how variable or how consistent two different distributions are. This can be done only after we compare, after we calculate the measures of dispersion of both the distributions. Next, it is to test the reliability of an average. Now, the measure of dispersion can be used to test how reliable a certain distribution is. Like in the case of the marks of the students, we see that one student was very consistent with all the subjects, whereas the other one was not so. We could very well rely on the first student, meaning the student whose marks were very close to each other. In other words, we can say whose marks were less variable. Similarly, in cases of the life cycle of products, if we have two different companies, company A and company B, and if, let's say A and B, if the products, if we take the sample, five different sample of, prod of company A and B, and we see the life of A lasts for, say, for example, 50 days, in another case, 52, 53, 48, and, say, 45. Whereas, the life cycle of the product of company B varies, say, one is 10, another is 70, another is 80, another is 12, another is 25. Now we see that the life cycle of the product of company A could be said more reliable because they are less variable. Whereas we really can't rely much on the product B because it could fail, fail any time. It could last maybe up to 80 days or it could fail even in 10 days. Therefore, this is less reliable. Therefore, variability tells us even about reliability. The third objective is to facilitate the computations of other st statistical measures like, for example, uh, the measure of correlation, regression, confidence intervals, control limits, and so on. Of course, we will see all of these in the subsequent sessions. And finally, it serves as the basis for control of variation. Of course, if you want to control the variation, like for example, if you want to control the variation of a certain parameter in production of the product, you will have to know the variability. Only after you know the variability, you can actually control it. Therefore, these are some of the objectives why we study measures of dispersion. Why do we need measure of dispersion? All right. Now, coming to the types of dispersion measures which we have to study, first let's understand how it's classified. Measures of dispersion could be measured in two different ways. The first is the distance measure and the second is the average of second order. Now in distance measure what we do is we basically measure the distance between the two selected observations which could be the two extremes like the maximum and minimum. The difference between the maximum and the minimum quantity of a distribution is actually the range that will give us the variability or the spread spreadness of the dispersion measure. Some of the examples here are range, interquartile range, interpercentile range, and so on. The second type is the average of second order. Here what we do is we take 
the variation from the mean we first calculate the mean then we measure the variation of each value of the distribution from the mean and then we find the dispersion or the variability some of the examples here are mean deviation and standard deviation which we will take after we take the first type of measure of dispersion now each of these measures can further be classified as absolute and relative an absolute measure is expressed in terms of the unit measurement of the variable suppose if I'm measuring in meters or centimeters an absolute measure would have the same unit whereas a relative measure is unitless now in case of absolute measure it cannot be used to compare two or more distributions expressed in different units so that is the drawback with absolute measure that is the limitation of absolute measure therefore we go for relative measures and relative measure is expressed as pure numbers independent of unit of measurement they are popularly known as coefficient of dispersions and they are basically used to compare the measure of dispersions well now let's go to the various common measures of dispersion which we have to study we will be seeing range interquartile range interpercentile range mean deviation and standard deviation or variance to start with let's take the first one and that is range now range is the simplest of all the measures of dispersion the range of a distribution is simply the difference between its two extreme observations it's the difference between the largest and the smallest observation of a distribution symbolically of course we can write range as maximum minus minimum or lowest minus sorry largest minus smallest now what about the coefficient that is when we need the data for comparison the relative measure that is given by the coefficient of range which is given by the largest minus smallest divided by largest plus smallest let's take one of these examples in the first case here for student A for student A here we see the range would be maximum minus minimum we see that maximum is 50 and the minimum is 10 so it is range is largest minus smallest in the first case it will be 50 minus 10 simply so it will be 40 in the second case the maximum is 32 and the minimum is 28 so it will be 32 minus 28 which is equal to 4 okay now coming to coefficient coefficient of range in the first case it would be 40 that is 50 minus 10 divided by 50 plus 10 that is 60 so it will be 4 by 6 meaning 2 by 3 yeah and in the second case that is for student B this is for A and for student B student B it will be 4 which is largest minus smallest 32 minus 28 divided by largest plus the smallest which is 32 plus 28 which is again going to be 60 okay so it will be 4 once and 4 15 times so it's 1 over 15 okay now here we understand we see how varied they are okay similarly let's take the uh, second example the example of the life cycle of two different products product A and B 
now in this case let me do calculate the range first for A and then for B and then the coefficient here well range is maximum minus minimum and coefficient is maximum minus minimum divided by maximum plus minimum okay so tell me what will be the value of range in the first case yeah the highest value here happens to be 53 and the lowest is 45 so the difference between them is 8 exactly that is my range here and for B it's the lowest is 10 of course and the highest is 80 so it's 80 minus 10 which is 70 okay now coming to the coefficient coefficient of A will be 8 divided by the sum of the maximum and minimum which is 53 plus 45 and that happens to be 8 divided by 98 okay we can of course simplify it and in the second case it should be 70 divided by 80 plus 10 80 plus 10 which is 90 so it will be 70 divided by 90 which is 7 by 9 okay so these are the coefficients now very simple and what do we do in case of this is of course for raw data what do we do when we have frequency distribution and when we have the uh, class intervals again the treatment is one and the same whether there is frequency distribution whether the table I mean the data is classified in a frequency distribution table whether grouped or ungrouped in both cases we just pick the maximum value of the variable and the minimum value of the variable subtract them to get the range and then subtract and divide by their sums to get the coefficient of range okay so that's the way how you calculate the range that is the first measure of dispersion now this is really very simple but it has got some drawbacks some limitations due to which it's not very commonly used well we had seen that it's not based on all the observations we just pick the maximum and the minimum we had really not bothered about other values at the same time we are not bothered about the frequency uh, the frequency of a given value at all it's not affected by in fact it is affected by extreme observations sometimes it so happens that you are consistent in most part but due to some error or some random reason there could be one extreme value and that extreme value is actually used to calculate the range and it's very much affected by that which could be a mistake it could be just by chance that you came to that extreme point but that actually gives or uh, it, it, it it contributes to the answer next it only gives a rough idea of the spread of observation and doesn't tell much about it just from where the value starts and to up to where it goes it doesn't give any idea about the pattern of the distribution because we of course are not looking into all the various uh, the variables all the other numbers except the minimum and the maximum and again as we've seen it's affected by fluctuations of sampling but of course we have seen that it's easy to calculate easy to understand and it gives a quick measure of variability whenever we are we need uh, a value in a, r a rough value just to understand maybe quickly we make use of it further it's used in the preparation of control charts 
and in the study of fluctuations of measures like prices of commodity, amount of rainfall in a given period, temperature of, pa uh, of patients in medical sciences and so on. Well that's all we have uh, in this video. In the subsequent videos we'll be taking up the other topics of measures of dispersion. Keep watching Edupedia World videos. Thank you.